Welcome to Toffee TV. Here is my three talking points. Everton won, Crystal Palace won at Goodison Park tonight. <clears throat> she made me throat still raw from uh, shouting at the players and the referee tonight. A 1-1 draw, yet. Yeah, listen, frustrated, you know, speaking to people at Army, uh, uh, you know, in the match, and, and they're frustrated as well, you know. Uh, one gentleman come up to me after the game and said, it won't be the 10 points that sends us down, it'll be the home form. Because it's a disgrace and, and it's difficult to argue with. And seeing opportunities fall, you know, disappear in front of our eyes. And, and that is my first talking point tonight. And it is the home form. I've just gone on a little bit about it on the match reaction, but it's something that needs to be reiterated. We've won three Premier League home games. And the next time we take the pitch at Goodison, it's March. That is awful. We won't, given we won two of them in three days back in early December. Take that away, and we've won one game all season at home. And I know you're not going to remove wins, of course, on the Premier League. I've tried to, but three home wins is it's absolutely appalling. And like I said on my match reaction, home wins keep you in this division. And I don't know, I don't know what they can do, other than just consistently work on better attacking plays than what we have. Hitting a long ball from your goalkeeper can't be your game plan. Smash it long and hope Dom gets on the end of it. Hope he either heads it up, brings it down, runs and scores, or it just runs through and he puts it in. It's great to have it as a weapon to mix it up from what you're doing. That cannot be the only the only play. Because James Sarkovsky hitting 60-yard crossfield passes is great. If your fullback then pulls it down and raids a pace and throws crosses in, Mikalenko doesn't. If there's anyone in front of me, turns back. Dwight McNeil is exactly the same. If you give him a bit of space out wide, he can put a nice cross in. He did. He put a lovely ball in in the first half, which Dom added wide, you know. But the minute there's any kind of opposition player in front of McNeil, he turns back. You know, he was. Last season. Let's be honest, the first half of the season he was dreadful. And then he was brilliant when Dice came in. He was. He stepped up. He got us important goals. He was fantastic. We need that now. It's not been here all season. He had a little flurry in December. Not being there for the rest of the season. And he's been left on the pitch. Let's be perfectly honest. He's been left on the pitch from, for his delivery from a dead ball. And lo and behold, he crosses the corner in and Onana heads it in. That isn't enough from a wide player. Now, again, that's just me. I want my wide players to create things. I think Jack Harrison takes us up the pitch. I think he takes it the other way. Is he brilliant? No. But he's a good, hard-working pro. He, he put a couple of great balls in, one with his left foot, one with his right foot. He drives forward. We don't get that from Dwight McNeil. We certainly don't get it from Young because he hasn't got the legs to do it anymore. And so what Everton have to do is get our full-backs around them. And yet, Michalenko's not quick enough. Decent defender. 1v1, good solid player, and he's had a good season, Michael, but it's not enough with teams who are sat back, and there's no patterns of play, as in short wall passes, and creating angles, we knock it round the back, we play the ball out from the back, into Garner, and he gives it off, and he, but we don't pull teams, we're doing it, and we almost end up back with the goalie, and then he just kicks it long anyway, it's not like we're drawing the press in, to break the press, and then we spring it, there's got to be, more of a attacking threat when we go forward at home. Away, I get it. I've no issue, absolutely zero issue with what Sean Dyche and the management team do away from home. I think we're in most games. I think we cause teams problems because we're compact and we spring them sometimes with the core and with Don maybe and Harrison has been key to that when he's played. Then at Goodison Park, there's too many moments where it's easy for the opposition. And if you can't get this right at home, our home wins aren't going to go the way we want them to. And away from home, we've got tough games. You know, we've got to go to Newcastle, we've got to go to Manchester United, we've got to go to Arsenal, we've got to go to Chelsea. You know, Luton away will be a horrible game. You've got Brighton away at the weekend. You know, you're looking at them games and going, there's not, doesn't seem to be loads and loads of points there for us to take. Then you look at the home form and you go, well, we've just had a team at home tonight who haven't got a manager. They've got three stroke four of their best players missing. And we've we've not been able to beat them. And that's a that is a real worry. It is a real worry. And 
that's where I am until unless we can get this home form sorted, we're, in, we're bang in trouble. We really are, and, and that's even with points coming back. So I don't know. I mean, you you know, let me know what you think the answers are. I, I, I don't. I really don't buy that. It's it's on the play. The players aren't good enough because I see lesser quality teams with lesser you know players who I think are getting other teams around us in the Premier League and below us. That will that cause other teams more problems just simply by patterns of play. Like I say, defensively, the management team have got us really solid, but it isn't good enough to say without the ball we're great. The shape's great and we're tight. We can't rely on set pieces for all our goals. We just can't. We simply can't. We haven't won in eight Premier League games. That form is relegation form. That's where I am with it. Uh, second thing I want to talk about is how important Abdullah Decore will be to us. It was great to have him back tonight. He was hit and miss. He was trying to get us going in the first half, a few flicks. But again, I just don't think we we, we end up at the same place. We're, we're trying to get him almost running beyond Dom. But we don't create those moments. Certainly at Goodison. I always think it's, it, he's performed really well away this season, the core range. He's got key goals. And he's got a you know, he's got a couple of Goodison. But he just doesn't seem as effective at home. I, and I think it is because we don't stretch the pitch. We don't genuinely, generally we don't sit on the edge of our box. But we're not pushing teams the other way, leaving gaps for him to get in. And I don't know what the kind of like what the tactic is because he doesn't, you know, Dominic Alderloon wins a lot of his headers and flicks things on, but it's not like the core is steaming past them. So I don't know why. Because when you look at how number 10, if you want to play that, or a split striker should work, especially if you've got a big aerial threat like Dom, is they should be making it, he should be gambling. Every time that ball's gone towards Dom, the core should be gambling for any kind of flick on. And he doesn't, he almost hangs back in front of Dom, as if Dom's going to be able to cushion the header down to him. And really, when that ball's going long, the core should be gambling. And we should have one of our two midfielders pushing into the hole in case it drops to Dom. And then therefore we'd have an outlet with the core. We'd have Dom on the edge and our two wide men should be right up as well. But we don't. We're almost in the old Terry Venables triangle where we've got the striker. Everyone else has dropped back and the long ball's going to him. And if he can't get it on his chest or cushion it down, it's gone. Because Dom ultimately is just flicking things on and there's not really much he can do. So I don't know, we've gone after come up with that conundrum. It's great to have him back and he'll be key. Keeping him fit will be key. But we have got to somehow fathom this out and fathom how we can get more out of his ability at Goodison Park. Because right now, we, we're we struggling. And I, I, do, I do believe we can do more. I do believe we can play better than what we're playing. And, and create better quality chances. I think... You know, whether you you buy into this or listen to Jesse Marsh, whether you think Jesse Marsh is, has a clue or he doesn't have a clue. He was, you know, believe on Sky tonight, I've been sent a couple of quotes from him and <clears throat> he was kind of saying, I believe, it's great having these chances that you're missing. But you're missing, A, it is a little bit of misfortune, but it's a level up, it's quality of player, of course it is. But it's also the quality of chances. It's okay things dropping around in the box and you're getting a shot that gets blocked or whatever. That isn't good quality chances when you look at how other teams do it. So we've got to do more with that, definitely. And you know, home form and decor, for me, it's it's gonna be absolutely key um moving forward. And he's gotta get that midfield balance right. And you know, I think James Garner and, and Adrissa Garner Gay are probably gonna to have to split the time. And I personally would lean towards Adrissa Garner Gay at the minute. I think James Garner's do has had a good season, I think. I think he's a he's a nice footballer, but I think we just get more out of Adrissa and you need Amadou Onana in there. So again, that's a difficult decision for the manager um, to make him. We'll have to see what he comes up with there moving forward. And then the third and final point has got to be, you know, we're waiting with bated breath for these points back. I mean, how can this can how can this appeal thing continue? Now we we've almost got. To, I'm sure this is what the manager. Is treating it like that. We're not getting any points back, which means we're in. We are in right now a straight battle with Luton Town. Can we match their results? If we do, we stay up. But 
how can this just be allowed to bob on the way it is? How can it take so long? How can clubs like Luton, you know, and Everton not know where the positions are? And then, you know, there's another charge now. I, for what it's worth from me, and, and again, I know nothing uh, like anybody else, but Everton shouldn't even be in any um, fear whatsoever that they'd get more points taken because there should never, ever be the opportunity to do a club twice for the same offence, which is ultimately what it would be. But I couldn't sit here and go, we'll be all right because they won't do us for the second. We'll get points back and they won't do us for the second offence. Now, the only way that probably wouldn't happen is if the mitigation that Everton have put forward this time means that they accept that and then the Premier League have to accept that the thing why Everton have, have potentially gone over in their eyes. And don't forget, because Everton have accepted the the Premier League's ruling, because they have to, Everton are not accepting they've breached. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But if, if it was the case where <clears throat> they accepted the mitigation, then that may remove the second charge. It may not. And therefore, there's a threat of points and... Who's to say Everton don't get five points back, say? Then get hit with six points next time. Then appeal it and get three back or appeal it and get none back. And therefore, we're actually one point worse off than we are now. So this is why the home form would be key and this is why we have to win. But the big, my big issue with this is, and the reason I'm putting it in tonight as a third and final talking point, is because it is affecting games that we play all the time. It is affecting the conditions that we're playing and how can that be fair? And I get, listen, there'll be fans of other clubs that'll watch this, trolls, you'll get fans of other clubs that believe Matthews and things like that and listen to a narrative that the Premier League have pushed that Everton are where they are for overspend. There'll be Evertonians who don't want to hear it, they don't want to accept it. You know, stop talking about it, we've just got to accept it. Well, you've got to talk about it because it's relevant. But whether or not, whatever fan you are there, Found that's your point of view, and this is mine, but it is affecting the conditions of games. It's affecting Goodison Park. It, it, it is. You're going in there. If Everton had gone in there tonight on 29 points, if I'm sat here tonight, we're on 30 points with 10 points ahead of Luton, I'd be quite confident saying, we're fine. We will win three more games. Luton are getting 39 points. We're safe. We'll be safe. We're not safe right now. We'll be safe because we'll, we'll be more relaxed and therefore we're able or we'd feel more confident we'll get over the line um, and then start again, you know, maybe there's big changes needed in the summer and all that and you, you move forward. But that ain't the case. We are sat in that ground. You can tell most Evertonians are stressed with it, worried, fearful, and that translates onto the pitch. Whether you accept it or not, it does. Are they professionals? Should they be able to play through? Well, it affects them. It's their team. And all of a sudden, they're in the bottom three when they feel like they should be 12th. We'd be 12th now on 30 points. It's a different outlook. And so the fact that the Premier League are just leaving this hanging, or I just personally, I can't get my head around how it can take longer than the first one. But listen, I have waffled for, for long enough. Thank you if you stuck it out. Thank you very much for that. Uh, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. We appreciate each and every one of you subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Take it easy. See you later.